Hello and welcome to Linux Lads. We are officially the only Linux podcast that is 100% gluten free. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Um, we have got, as usual, uh, a most action packed show for you. Um, we have a big release later on to talk about, which uh, everyone pretty much fucking knows about. So uh, uh, without further ado, uh, Connor, uh, one plus one, you've been doing funny things to your one plus one. So what I've been doing is I've been putting a one to touch on my one plus one. Um and so far it's actually pretty good. Um I suppose it's kinda eighty to ninety percent there. There's a couple of maps or apps here there, like um WhatsApp and whatnot that aren't really on it. But there's a really good web browser, um really good mapping app. Um that's quite good. And uh, I I see see you got like a MB or sorry, Libre Lek running on your uh, Rock sixty four. That's interesting. Yeah, indeed. Um, I got a Rock sixty four. Um, thanks to um, Pine, which um, Lucas was on a couple of podcasts ago, and went out and purchased it myself. Um, and my idea was this is just going to be a a NAS box or a, a media device, and I settled on a media device and put Libre Lek on it, and. There's an MB plugin. You can put MB server on Libralek, as I said, Cody. Um, and then from your other devices, you can then stream your media over MB. It's actually really good. Nice, nice. Off to the races. Um, Mike, what about yourself? Yeah, no, I've been doing uh, pretty much... Uh, not Well, I haven't been doing much, but I've done some battling with JavaScript, which was uh, horrible. Uh, because basically I don't know much JavaScript and I went to the zoo which was amazing it was a lovely day bank holiday Monday and Dublin Zoo is uh, just exactly the right size for a day trip uh, so that you see all of it uh, you don't have to hurry up and it's got amazing stuff obviously penguins the best animals uh, represented so that's all good yeah, that all sounds uh, really fun. Uh, while you were at the zoo, Mike, uh, I was at home in my dressing gown, turning myself inside out on the jacks. So uh, <laughs> I got myself, I got myself one of those lovely change in the seasons uh, mega flus. I don't know what the hell it was, but uh, but yeah, I, I spent the, I spent the hottest weekend this year um, inside catching up on Marvel movies on the couch. So yeah, not to not to. Uh, make too much of a pity party out of it um i'm better now uh, <laughs> we have a, a pretty nice episode coming up we've got some news from purism we've got some news from Nextcloud. uh of course a little bit of pine 64 but then of course the big one 1904 so we're gonna get right on that and dedicate a lot of time to that but first um we have an azire coupon code so azire they're a security focused vpn provider based in sweden uh, that's where the law doesn't require them to log traffic so they don't do it they operate servers in europe and north america uh, their servers are also owned and not rented installed on location by their engineers and running db and linux they provide a provide a wireguard and open vpn option uh, their client is gpl version 2 licensed and it's available on linux they take all major payment methods including cryptocurrency um, also you don't even have to give them an email address so the the code linux lads use that when ordering uh, make sure when you click the green add code button or make sure that you click the green add code button to get the discount and that code's valid until the 1st of January 2020. So um, first up on the agenda, what have we got? Purism, Libra 5, uh, we've got some uh, video evidence of the progress. Um, so apparently this is like the first kind of uh, glimpse we've got really um, of, the, of the device at this, this sort of a stage. Uh, Connor, you put this in. Um, have you seen it? I have been having a look. Um, it's it's quite quite uh, exciting. Um, certainly, pretty good progress. The last video demonstration I saw of it uh, was about a month ago, and it was really laggy. Um, the scaling on the operating system wasn't the best uh, at all. Um, it was really kind of proof of concept, and I was thinking, genie, if they're at that stage, then what's the story here? And then. They came out with this and boot up in under 10 seconds. It's showing incoming calls, um, SMS chat and web browsing. And even um, 
a dev kit to dev kit video calling or not video calling sorry just regular audio calling to prove that the um the dev kits work with their uh their mobile data uh with the sim card and it can can make phone calls so really exciting that was one of my questions actually yeah so that is that like a gsm call or or, or like a voip call uh i don't think they clarified that's a good point it could be a voip call but in the um in the videos it does appear that there's your normal mobile phone bar signal seems to be going up so i don't think it's going over wi-fi but it could be wrong i suppose we can find that out and get it in the show notes um uh mike did you catch that did you uh uh, no, I didn't actually. I uh, didn't actually realize if they are uh, using GSM or if they are using just VoIP uh, on there. I know that they wanted to make uh, their communications or the device based around Matrix. Uh, so I'm not sure how far they got, even even for phone calls somehow. Although I'm not sure how that was going to work. Next up, uh, next cloud sixteen is out. Uh, Mike, you you stuck this in. Uh, obviously, we uh, we make fairly um, regular use of next cloud and and all the shit we do. So, um, Mike, you could probably speak more about what's new in this version. Yeah, I think this version is going to see me finally uh, move from on uh, on device storage for everything to the cloud properly because. I wouldn't do it if it was meant if it if it meant to give uh, Google, Microsoft, Apple, whoever all my data. But Nextcloud, as I've been seeing recently, we've been seeing that they are really maturing. The project is getting to a place where it's stable, where you can rely on it uh, doing the basic stuff properly. So I'm uh, I'm very happy to see that the next uh, next uh, iteration is going to just basically add polish uh, there are some security features uh, that are going to be aided by some kind of a machine learning algorithm that will try to figure out if whoever is logging in is uh, a, a, a proper legitimate user or if somebody is trying to hack it and also for notifications uh, and recommend sorry for no- recommendations uh, for if you are searching for stuff there is going to be a new privacy sensor that lets users see their data and who has access to it the talk application will let uh, administrators define commands which users can call from the chat Uh, there is going to be a project application so that people can Basically, I, I I haven't seen it working yet, but I'd imagine it like a uh, Asana or some kind of a Kanban board and uh, access folder, uh, access control for for group folders uh, to enable administrators to control who has access to what. So it looks like a feature packed release, and I I love to see Nextcloud going from strength to strength. Connor. It, it's certain, I'm just looking through, as Mike was speaking, I was just looking through the article there and um, in relation to some of the points that he was making of you can now switch the disk from your um, your your other um, cloud providers. I was thinking of Google Docs and what, or Google Drive and whatnot. Um, and you can set up your, your own one. I mean, talking back to my um rock 64 there's something called next code next cloud pi um it was initially for the raspberry pi but it, it runs on other single board computers i think they have an official release for the rock 64 as well and it's just the case of you have this device and you hook up a big hard drive to it over usb or or uh whatever your connection of choice and that is your cloud um and you can even have it where it's it is connected to the wider internet, and uh, they have they're showcasing their their mobile phone application, and it just says, um, put in your server address and um and log in with your username and password, and essentially there you go, um, there's your own private cloud, so it's it's it is quite compelling. Next up, uh, we uh, we have a nice little Pine sixty four uh, live stream to look forward to. Um, Mike, uh, you put that in. What do you want to tell us more about that? Uh, so this is going to be over, unfortunately, by the time this episode is out. Uh, but uh, the people at Pine sixty four are going to be live on YouTube. Uh, 
with live chat uh, Sunday, so it's in two days. Uh, and uh, I believe the recording of it is going to stay on YouTube. And they are going to be talking about the Pine book and then and the Pine phone. So if if you've missed that, then you can watch it how it was going to be is recorded, uh, whatever suits you <laughs> time wise. So I made a real mess of it. There's going to be a link in the show notes that will, uh, if if you haven't if you haven't been on the live chat, you can see the recording there, and you'll get hopefully some more insight into Pine Book and Pine Phone. Connor, uh, you found a pretty good hack to uh, sync your GNOME shell extensions between desktops. Uh, tell us more about that. It's essentially um, your GNOME shell extensions um, rather than, let's say, you have a fresh install and going in and saying, oh, I, I like these uh, these three or four GNOME shell extensions that you always enable, rather than going in and going, okay, brand new install, new install, fuck's sake, swipe, swipe, oh, okay. swipe. It's a way of syncing them so they're they're permissive so you just log in with one username and password and there's your four favorite ones essentially it's a way of syncing them just like you can sync your passwords between browsers and that sort of thing and oh, okay and bookmarks and whatnot it's not a, it's not officially from gnome it's a it's a third party workaround okay so time for the big discussion of this episode um we've all been rocking the uh 1904 Ubuntu, of course, it's that time of year. Oh, I, I think all three of us, I think between us, we went through, what was it, seven different uh, uh, variants? Um, so yeah, we all really put it put it to the test and really just just hammered on it for two days. It was crazy. Um, so uh, guys, Connor, initial impressions? My initial thoughts, uh, at first I, I tried out Ubuntu, Ubuntu Budgie. Um, it's very flash. Uh, it kind of wasn't for me. The way uh, Ubuntu Budgie is laid out, it, it has the the taskbar at the bottom and a dock at the at the or taskbar at the top and a, a dock at the bottom. Uh, wasn't for me. I think the way that it's laid out in Solus is probably better, but um, that's pretty easily configurable. I think I was able to swap things around pretty quickly. Um, it's essentially. If you like GNOME Shell, but don't like it, its layout, don't like that it's keyboard focused and you want it, it to become more mouse focused with a menu, clickable menu and so on, then essentially go for Budgie because, um, that is essentially GNOME Shell that looks like Windows 10 is how I would, I would describe Budgie. Would you say that it's better or worse if you compare it to Cinnamon? I personally prefer cinnamon. So if there was an Ubuntu cinnamon edition, I'd really like that. Some some would argue that that is Linux Mint, but Linux Mint <laughs> <laughs> Linux Mint does its own customizations and also is only based off uh, an LTS, whereas uh, Linux Mint will not be doing a, a version that's based on 1904. Um, but I've tried pretty much all of them. Uh, Ubuntu Mate uh, is is pretty much this the same. I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing. Zubuntu with XFC was pretty much the same. Again, not saying that that was necessarily a bad thing. The big thing with those releases is a newer, uh, newer kernel, newer backend, um, and they seem to be quite, quite responsive. Um, uh, Ubuntu Studio, I did not get around to testing, unfortunately. Uh, Ubuntu Kylin or Chillin, I think is, is pronounced. I actually did get a chance to test out in the 20 minutes just before we started recording. <laughs> so I, I quickly, uh, just went, went through that. Um, and I ha took a couple of screenshots. I might, um, link those in the show notes. Um, if you, you, you can, it starts off with Chinese by default, but, uh, just like any Ubuntu in the installer, you can scroll and select English. It broadly accepts that, uh, except for their, they, they do have GNOME software, so in English you'll be able to, because GNOME software supports English, we'll be able to navigate and install um, new software, no problem whatsoever. They do have their own software center as well, so they supply both. Uh, by default, that is full of Chinese characters, so you definitely would not be able to understand anything there. It looks very kind of uh, a mix between 
uh, Windows XP and but with Windows 10 kind of transparency is a way a way my way of describing it. So if, if you're familiar with Windows, it might be one for you. But I think the Jewel of the Crown is just regular old stock Ubuntu. It actually looks really, really nice. Yeah, I have to I have to agree. Um like that was a nice rundown of all the kind of the the uh I suppose those extraneous ones, the weirdos. Um <laughs> uh but a lot of uh, like a lot of people love those desktops, so it's great that Ubuntu has that reach that it can just it, like everyone just like immediately reskins it and respins it and whatnot. Um uh, yeah, I was I was actually really curious about uh, stock Ubuntu. So, um, cause I haven't, I have not actually tried it in, in quite a few years. So I, uh, first of all, put it on my, uh, my, uh, laptop, the, uh, the Apollo. And it was, it was quite, like, it was quite good. I, I quite enjoyed it. Like it, it, um, you know, it did, it didn't seem like a system hog, which I thought it would be, but, um, everything just was snappy and, you know, fluid and it looked nice. You know, the, the screen isn't amazing on that device. So, uh, sometimes the, everything can look a little bit too packed in because it's a, I think it's like a 1080 display, but it's a small screen, but it, so everything looks very kind of tiny on it. But, uh, yeah, I think it's like an 11 inch screen or something, but, uh, Ubuntu as a whole, this release is very, very good. I, I really liked it. Um, uh, it's, it's very uncluttered. Um, it still retains those, uh, favorite icons down the left hand side. I actually found that quite useful. Um, when I actually, that article you linked, Connor, the, uh, 10 things you should do before you install, uh, Ubuntu or after you install Ubuntu, um, I got a really great one. We'll link that in the show notes because it's a great tip. Uh, it's such a small thing, but like on your favorites on the left hand dock with all your application menus, you can uh, you can get the tweaks for for Ubuntu, and you can enable. Uh, I think it's just with a terminal command. I'd have to find out, but um, yeah, it is just yeah. Actually, that's right. Um, with the the minimize on click, so that's something I really loved at Windows Seven of all places. Um, so that that tiny little action like you click to minimize click to maximize just the same icon seems like such a simple thing but it makes the experience so much better um mike uh what variants were you trying out well i've tried kubuntu uh, because uh, i have a love for kubuntu uh, or for kde but unfortunately i am in the middle of my gnome cycle so i i not only distro but i cycle between uh, desktop environments about half a year each uh, plus or minus and I'm just right now I'm pretty much on the peak of enjoying the GNOME workflow and so I installed Kubuntu I installed it on two machines one was my laptop one was work PC I've uh, looked at it right back from the beginning um, it has got the same wallpaper that uh, my KDE Neon installation had a few months back by default so I'm like uh, and uh, then I look at the windows they've got a big massive border around them which I'm not a big friend of but that's my me being really shallow and of course this being Kubuntu you can you can basically configure it to death like you can you can do anything to it so that's those are only superficial things uh, there was one thing that bothered me a little, or a lot actually. I I uh, pretty much learned to uh, use uh, Meta and uh, Tab keyboard combination to switch windows, and it's really important for me that it works. Not Alt Tab, not uh, Shift Tab, Grave, uh, Control, or whatever other people use. Just Meta and Tab. It has to be. There has to work. Otherwise, I can't use a computer. And unfortunately, I tried to change this uh, to default uh, alt tab, which it is to switch windows in Kubuntu to this shortcut. And I just couldn't make it work on either of the two systems. It just it just started only cycling through like UI components, like buttons on a web, on a page or something. And I don't know what's wrong with it. Uh, maybe it's me just not being able to configure it properly. Other than that, on the plus side, everything else works. I try Discover, which is uh, the GUI for the package manager. Uh, that worked. It's uh, like almost flawlessly. There were some icons missing or anything, but uh, I think that uh, it's really gone almost to to a state where it really is the uh, the 
kind of glorious shop window for the KD or for the Kubuntu project that it should be. So I tried to install a normal package. I tried to install a snap and it all worked properly. So I think uh, as, a, as a result, it's a solid release. Um, it's Kubuntu. So I, just because I don't like the defaults, like the fact that the icon doesn't bounce anymore next to the cursor and that Dolphin doesn't... Uh, open uh open f applications uh, files and folders on single click just because i don't like it doesn't mean that i can't reconfigure it easily and uh, with the exception of the uh windows which is now through, everything else works perfectly so i can't complain uh one thing i i don't like about kd is the, the fact that it bounces so <laughs> there you go <laughs> it, different folks for different strokes yeah, I think that was uh, Michael Tunnel from for Tax Digital basically advised them, if I remember correctly, maybe it was a release before, they advised the community team to do some design changes and the non-bouncing icon is, was one of them and the, and the double click to open was another one. And when I run Kubuntu, I really like the fact that there are, or not Kubuntu, but KD Neon, there, I like the fact that there are these little tiny things that are a bit out there that harken back to the time of KDE 3.5, which was the first KDE that I really used. And so there's a little bit of nostalgia there that doesn't do me any harm, but uh, that I really like about it. And I understand that people like to modernize things, but this is, and I do as well, but this is just the few things I like to keep the same. So just, just to keep the line there, the, the, the little thing that ties it back to the first experience I really had with Kubun, with KDE. Overall, my, my summary of this, I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, and this topic is, is due to end or anything, but overall, my experience of particularly Ubuntu stock is just, even though it's not an LTE release, it seems like it's a very refined release. It seems to be that they just refined on little things. They made it faster. Um, it's quite snappy, quite responsive. Uh, new, um, kernel. So new supports there. Um, and new, um, gnome release and the gnome release itself seems to be snappy and responsive and refined. Um, and so it seems to be a mature release, despite the fact it's not an LT, L L LTS. Yeah, I, I can only agree. It's, uh, I, it's, I've never, like, as I was saying to you guys in the, te on Telegram during the week, I was like, oh my God, I've never been this, like, excited about a new Linux distro. Um, and it's so strange that it's like, it would be Ubuntu to hit that kind of note. Because, like, we've been talking about all sorts of other distros for the last few months, like, you know, who's the next, what's the next big thing, you know, what's the next distro to kind of impress everybody and take a little leap forward in the Linux desktop. But, like, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's just good old-fashioned Ubuntu that kind of impressed us uh, this time around. Um, I find that a little bit uh, a little bit fun. But... Um, but yeah, I guess it's uh, it's it's got that backing. It's got it's got all sorts of resources behind it. So I mean, it makes sense, and it's got a very dedicated team. Um, you know, it's a, it's a real passion project as well as a commercial entity. So you know, why not? And it's kind of like the, you know, the U two of Linux, I guess. <laughs> 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 yeah, you, lo you love it or you hate it, you know. <laughs> oh, I, th I was wondering where you were going with that one. <laughs> well, you know, the fame element and also the the kind of yeah, they just you either think they're assholes or you love them. I don't know. Uh, I I don't know. I, that I know I know there are plenty of assholes who are all, all over the internet saying how Ubuntu and Canonical are bad for whatever reason. Well, more likely no reason, just because they are angry at the world, you know. But uh, I do have. Uh, some criticism as well. I mean, I've been nothing but criticizing today. That's not good. But anyway, basically, I uh, ran also stuck Ubuntu on my uh, HP laptop, and that thing is old. Like, uh, it's all Intel, no graphics card, no nothing. Well, there is an integrated chip, anyway. And it's, uh, I bought it secondhand in 2014 uh, or 2015. So it, it is falling apart, and every little I think that that's what it is. Every little speed improvement is drastically visible. Say, I installed Ubuntu, I installed Steam, I installed uh, Sunless Sky, which is uh, a game that uh, I enjoy playing. And 
it was stuttering constantly. I tried the same with Manjaro, and the stuttering almost disappeared. Like that would be a stutter every ten minutes, whereas on Ubuntu it would be more or less uh, uh, constant. So I think there is still. I don't know if it's. Uh, I don't know what kind of a, why, why that is. I don't know the technical differences between the distributions. Uh, maybe it's the implementation of Steam. Maybe it's the implementation of uh, I don't know Wine libraries or whatever it uses. But uh, for me, it was significantly slower. That being said, so that I just don't uh, like sound like the biggest grunge. I I've tried. Uh, I've tried the stock Ubuntu. I opened it up. And uh, the experience for like if I if I look at it from a from the point of view of, of a person whose laptop is not falling apart, uh, and uh, who you know if I if I look at it through the point of view of a normal user or the user who's whom this is targeted at, the experience is just um, flawless. I like the way Ubuntu uh, takes GNOME shell. Uh, incorporates it in so that is uh, you know adds some usability features, make sure that uh, it works for most people. It's like if I you know if if uh, no matter what I said before and no matter my personal preferences, if I was to take a person who comes to me and say, I would like to try Linux, and there's too many distros, what do I choose? I'd say like 99% of, cho of of times, unless the person, unless there was a different reason for it, I'd say Ubuntu. You get the most, like a whole, whole, all in all polished experience, you get stability, you get reasonable speed, and you get the company behind it and the comp community behind it for support. So I think, uh, just to sum this, uh, just to sum this tirade up, it's uh, another really nice release from the from the Ubuntu uh, from the Ubuntu community and from Canonical, and uh, it's good that things are going as far as I can see in the right direction. Yeah, I, I, it's like I always, I always, you know me, I always come at this shit from the point of view of a person who uses Linux as their daily driver. Um, you know, not as concerned with the technical nuts and bolts of everything. I just enjoy using linux and i enjoy seeing how it can start to match the the technology and the software that other people use as their daily drivers and you know in my opinion it surpasses it in most things but with with this version of ubuntu like it's so seamless like how using it it just feels very polished very uh snappy so that this is the first time i can properly say this is like it this is like a daily driver Linux distro. Like there's no rough edges really that I can see that are kind of insurmountable. Like it, it has the cohesiveness of a proprietary product, which is uh, which is not something I can say for a lot of Linux distros. Um, Connor? Um, one thing I will say is, and I think I've said it in previous podcasts, but um, and, and previous Ubuntu versions, but... I bear with repeating the Yaru um default team um fair fox to them. It's 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 a fairly very good team. I mean, I like the fact that it's Linux, you can change the team. So it it I it's it's something that I I do think that I, I probably would change a couple of things here or there. But if somebody says this is a locked down computer, you cannot change anything about the, the appearance ju just like um uh, the guys in elementary with their Pantheon um, desktop environment, the theme is locked down. If you sat me down in front of an Ubuntu uh, 19.04 with the default Yarrow theme, I would be perfectly happy using that theme. It's it's quite well designed. And um, there's a little uh, 80s Easter egg. In, it's not the default um, background, but there's kind of an 80s neon background if you looked through the backgrounds that are supplied with it, which um, I kind of switched to that one. And in my poking around in VirtualBox, I did uh, kind of do a recording of how you would uh, change the theme to something else. Um, I picked, I think I picked the Materia theme. Um, I did a, a recording, which I might include in the show notes. Um, and if that is a thing that people like <laughs> after watching my awful attempt at trying to do a video tutorial, then feel free to email us and say, 
uh, yeah, keep that up or no, it was shit, Connor. Don't ever do that again. I like to go back to something that you said there that uh, if this was a computer that is completely locked down and you can't change anything I think for some people and maybe quite many this is almost that say this is going to be a workstation for a lot of people to come sit down to uh, and they might either not want to or they will not even be able to change the menus and stuff like that you know this is for people to expand uh, who who will use it to work to do other stuff than tinker with the desktop so the fact that they are getting it to to look this amazing is extremely important because uh, this is this is the default that a lot of people will, will spend a lot of time looking at and the usability and the experience of it is really important and i think they are getting it right if you obviously if this is a personal preference but if you put me in front of uh, few desktop environments then ubuntu would uh, or the implementations even and even compare it with uh, with the other operating systems then ubuntu would definitely for me be up in the top three or top two at the moment yeah i'll be inclined to agree definitely in the uh, top three top two for me for um ubuntu yeah i mean uh, it's it's definitely been a bit of a love-in for ubuntu so i can only kind of echo what uh what you guys are saying like yeah yeah it's kind of my it's my daily driver now it's on the uh it's on the desktop it's on the laptop um i don't have any plans to change it um because you know i've gotten my groove already with this keyboard shortcuts like i i know my way around it now it's instinctive already so um so yeah that's that's hard to find i haven't had that since like earlier versions of linux mint um as as you know, I, I sojourned into the the KDE land wasteland. Um, <laughs> ooh, uh, oh, he didn't say wasteland, did he? Um, <laughs> oh my god, that's that's so offensive to KDE users. Um, I I didn't like it. Like I, I tried to like it at the start, and I did kind of like it for a little while. But yeah, after a while, I was just like, it's just so ugly. <laughs> like, I just can't look at it anymore. It's I tried some themes, and I just. But it looked too much like the like the co- the cockpit of a space shuttle or something like I, I like it was too much sometimes like every configuration menu while it was nicely organized and it had its own aesthetic I guess and it wasn't ugly per se it just it was too harsh or something like that I think that's the word for me when it comes to KDE it's very uh, industrial isn't it yes that's exactly it yeah throwing a, a speculation bone out there. Um, what I'm thinking is that the reason why 1904 is so refined is, uh, the, speaking of an, an LTS, 2004 is two releases away. And the rumor is that they want to get Wayland working by default on the next LTS. So between now and uh, 2004, there's an interim release, which will be uh, 1910. And so this is pure speculation, but the one that they break everything and learn from it could be 1910. So why not have a a good, solid, refined release before that? I can see that coming. Yeah, definitely. They, they, people need to get on Wayland now. It's, I mean, how old is Exorc? Is it like 20, 25 years? And the time doesn't stand by, does it? So, yeah, they're saying for the the last LTS release that they were very nearly doing it, but they felt that it wasn't stable enough for an LTS. So that makes me think that they're going to try again for the next LTS. And since they they haven't tried with nineteen oh four um, uh, Wayland being default, I'm guessing that they're going to try in nineteen ten. I think um, there are some signs that what you're saying is probably going to become true is that, um, for example, I think fractional scaling in in the GNOME uh, environment for Ubuntu is in a, is it's an option. If you have a high DPI monitor, you can turn it on in uh, in Wayland, but I don't think you can turn it on on uh, in Xorg session unless you enable somehow experimental features. I think that's what I heard on Ubuntu podcast anyway. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, so I think they are slowly transitioning, and I think that you are right. This is going to be uh, Wayland is going to be in twenty twenty oh four the new the new desktop the new uh 
XRX, uh, basically the new default. So we've had some folks uh, ask us, uh, where's the uh, boner section gone? Um, <laughs> so uh, you'd be glad to know that we're bringing it back this this time around. Um, Connor, I'll go to you first. What is your what is your particular boner of the last s- several weeks or however long it's been since we did it? <laughs> um, my latest boner has been Ubuntu Touch. Uh, I want to give a shout out to those guys because... They're, uh, as I said, it's about 80 or 90% there for me as a viable alternative operating system for, uh, versus Android. Um, yeah, it's, uh, when poking around with it, most of the applications that I would use would be there. Um, bar some things like WhatsApp or your, you know, banking application, which banking applications are usually the stickers. Um, but if you can get around those kind of things that are only exist on Android, then I would say, yeah, it, it's a viable, sal- solid, stable um, operating system. So Ubuntu Touch. Mike, I believe you have a boner for us. Yeah, I have a big erection of appreciation. Uh, that's for all the projects that uh, provide uh, possibilities to edit uh, videos on Linux because last episode I said in my sleepy tired uh, rant that uh, people who want to edit 4K videos should probably get a Mac. Uh, as a stupid thing to say and I feel like I said, like I basically looked down on a lot of projects that I try to achieve uh, the goal or try to provide uh, the video editing uh, software for Linux like KDN Live uh, and all the others. I'm not a video editor, obviously, so I don't know much about it. But uh, I uh, probably should have thought about uh, should have thought twice before saying that because definitely there are possibilities to edit video on Linux. It might not be the standard of Final Cut Pro, but uh, as with everything on Linux, uh, we are uh, you know it's 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 always improving it's a life organism it's not like the mac where if apple decides to do x x is going to happen this is much more life uh, environment and therefore by default much better so yeah definitely my boner goes to all the video editors for for uh, linux okay so um yeah ubuntu is good that is the official uh, line on linux lads i believe um so uh, I think we're going to start to wrap up now. Um, so uh, as always, um, if you fancy, if you've liked hearing us uh, waffle on for the past 45 minutes, um, you can support us by going to linuxlads.com forward slash, forward slash support and uh, sending us some uh, European guineas or whatever you like to send. Um, so as always, you can get us on Telegram, uh, linuxlads.com forward slash Telegram. Uh, same works for Twitter, Facebook, Mastodon, and you can also email us at show at linux lads if you feel like it so as always thanks for listening uh i've been shane i've been connor and i've been mike see you guys bye bye